after watching this movie so many times, name an abuser you hate more than Sad Struthers. Oh, it never fails to like rub me the wrong way every time I watch this and watch the likeness of a Satin Struthers. Like what's up, Sat Satin just had to be short for Satan. Satan, Satan, Sad Satan. Oh, <laughs> all makes sense now. Hi you guys, welcome back to my channel. It's Tyra here with another struggle review here to discuss Sparkle. Now this movie is from 1976 and it stars Irene Cara and Lynette McKee. Now before we get all up into sister getting to the big time, I need you guys to drop down and subscribe to my channel and like this video. I'm gonna give you guys a moment to do that. Then we're gonna come back and discuss Child, when Mary Alice rolls up on you and says, baby, he just gonna drag you down to the gutter. When Mary Alice says gutter, believe her the first time. Like, <laughs> Mary ain't never lied in a movie in all her life. Everything she said just come across strong. When she said gutter, I believed it. You should have ran when you had a chance, but you didn't. Now we down at the field. Go back, 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 back. You guys have hopefully subscribed to see more of me let's get into this movie but before we jump into the video i have to give a shout out to the person who paid for and requested it so if you happen to be one of those people who get hella emotional every single time sister yells into the microphone give it up oh oh, oh the despair that was in there giving up it's not because of me. <laughs> it's because of this person right here. Thank you so much for supporting me and paying for this content. Getting into this movie, this movie was directed by Sam Osteen. This was actually the only movie ever that he directed, being that he is mostly known in the industry as a film editor. Editing films like Rosemary's Baby, The Graduate, Cool Hand Luke, and Chinatown. Now the writer, however, Joe Schumacher, he went on to write a whole bunch of good stuff. <laughs> this was the first film that he had ever written, but we went on to write things such as The Wiz, Car Wash, A Time to Kill, Falling Down, and The Lost Boys, amongst so many other things. But the major thing that we take away from this movie is the music. <laughs> the music with a z and a a the music here is all done by curtis mayfield you know i am blind and i cannot see you pity fools don't bother me right on for the darkness oh they came in and they put their guns on anthony <laughs> Curtis Mayfield put his foot into this entire soundtrack. Now, of course, I know that this soundtrack is also very synonymous with two other things. Of course, we have In Vogue in the red dresses doing what needed to be done, giving him something he could feel and all that good stuff when they did their rendition of it. And we also have the entire soundtrack here being done again and performing really, really well by the queen of soul herself, Miss Aretha Franklin. Argue with your mama. <laughs> I intensely prefer Lynette McKee and Irene Carver's versions of this soundtrack. Aretha Franklin has a really powerful voice and it's beautiful regardless, but there is something about the subtlety and the softness when we get Lynette and Irene's versions of these songs. And I think it's because of Aretha's strong voice along with her being a woman. <laughs> her being uh, older than 
who we are supposed to perceive here as, you know, teenagers singing these songs. With Irene Cara being merely 16, 17 years old during the making of this film, this was actually Lynette McKee's very first film, and the oldest of the bunch was actually the actress who portrayed Dolores. With her being 31 and sister actually being 21. And of course, we can't jump into this movie without discussing the remake from 2012. Is this movie better than that one or is the remake better than the original? Absolutely not. <laughs> Absolutely not. The OG Sparkle is the best one. And I'm going to explain why because people say that and you just feel like they're being biased. You know, you're going to stand by the old version of something just because of that nostalgia feel. Absolutely not. The remake is actually a really well made movie. It's just a different movie. We have a black director this time and a black female writer. The movie feels grander, it's cleaner, it's modernized. The characters are fleshed out a whole lot more. Where in, you know, the 1976 version, it's low key the sister in Sparkle Show. Whitney shines here as the mother in her last feature film performance. She does a great job. They also give her a whole lot more screen time as the mother than we got with Mary Alice in the OG version. Newcomer Jordan Sparks was here in her first role and we also got Mike Epps here. It was so big at the time for me at least knowing what the OG sparkle entailed and to hear that the likes of Mike Epps was gonna be Satin Struthers. I could not fathom that but he did deliver like he gonna be funny just either way. A hard pill to swallow to take him seriously, but he did so well in that role to me and I was very proud of his work. As well as Omari Hardwick, AKA Ghost as Levi, I really love what they did with his character. The disconnect happens with the film in that it's not only different, but there's a certain softness to this new one. In the original, you connect so heavily with Sister Sorrow and her downfall in a way that you don't connect to hers here. And even though the movie is about Sparkle, Sister's transition into her complete demise is a part of what makes Sparkle Sparkle. So you really need that connection. In the original, as far as Sticks, Levi, and the three girls are concerned, there is just such a desperation, a need to succeed. If we don't succeed now, we might not ever make it beyond our circumstances. But with the remake, there is just so much polish. We trade in this poor Harlem neighborhood with a mother who was working as a maid to this two-story lavish home. You know, the mother, she has her own dress shop making dresses. They are financially well off. As well as the mother being a holy roller Bible thumper. It's just a totally different movie. And then you get into the music. The music does not hit in the way that I need it to. Not in the way that it hits with the OG. Carmen's version of Sister versus Lynette's version. You know, the raspy, your tender smile sets me happy thoughts of you. Uh -uh, uh -uh. <laughs> the whispering, you know, all the, the overplayed sexuality of it. It's, it's, it's totally different. I did like Jordan Sparks' uh, rendition of One Wing towards the end of the movie from the songs, the look, the atmosphere, the personalities satin everything just seems a bit softer and a little bit more digestible and i think the ending best serves this purpose of course in the og sister dies and we lose her in the remake the sisters team up and we lose sad struthers now we open this movie unlike the ending with a joyous version of the sisters singing precious lord in the church choir being raised in a 1958 harlem by their single mom effie who works as a maid now our middle child dolores who just happens to be our darkest sister is the one who is most vocal towards her mother in resentment for her occupation as a maid that she sees as demeaning work She's not only opinionated, but she is the strongest out of the three. And then you have Sparkle. Sparkle is the youngest. She is very soft, shy, and quiet in her demeanor and has yet to really discover her own desires and identity aside from her oldest sister, sister that she idolizes. From her go-getter demanding attitude to her natural soft confidence that she exudes 
all the way down to just the beauty that sister possesses. Very self-deprecating in the way that she addresses situations. You know, oh, Sparkle, you sang so good. You look so beautiful, but not as good as sister. You know, sister look great. She sang even better. She has yet to notice what the hood neighborhood boy Sticks happens to see in her already. Getting into Philip Michael Thomas, <laughs> you know, don't kiss me because it's a sin. You know, it feels so good. It must be a sin. Very, very much so a church girl. Sticks, uh, watching this now, I never noticed how much he had his own agenda. Though Sticks is softer and more gentle in his approach than some, and we like Sparkle, we also enjoy the fact that Sparkle can sing as well as her sister. This might be an opportunity for me to get my music out there. Though I work in a record store now, I have ambitions to be a songwriter, a composer. This might be my big chance to jump. Bend over, being a rover. We're gonna turn the place out and now you jump. Mm. We're gonna shake a little fuck with doing fine. And now you're right on time, have a ball. Shoulder, shoulder, I hope my mama don't call no the rules. Give a little leg. We're gonna keep it in the groove. Did you see your sister? Was she went up there and showed him her stuff? Like, yes, absolutely. This is what I need. That charisma, that onstage presence that sister possesses that we just don't have and that I don't have solo. After all, we only get the opportunity to sing at the nightclub based off of the strength of sister's picture and what she looks like. Yeah, and they call her the ugly one. Like, yeah, y'all come on down and sing. Y'all can come on down as long as she is there. There is so much riding on sister and her beauty to the point that Styx is yet another person riding on that and trying to suck that out of her with everybody else. Now with Styx, it's beauty as well as her voice and talent with Levi is something totally different. Levi dreams of having sister. Levi's happy ass gripping the back of sister's head and ponytail, oh, open, open your mouth, kiss me, give me what I rightfully deserve. Not only have I been trying to wine and dine you, but look at this nice car I have you sitting in. Don't I deserve something? He wants to possess sister as well as her body and her virtue. But the gripping of the hair, even though it could come off as, you know, oh, that's sexy. It's also a grip that says, either give it to me, or I'll take it by force if I have to. You owe me this. And you have, sis wait a minute, wait a minute. Like, let me take my gum out. I will rightfully give it to you because you do have me sitting in this nice car that you don't own. <laughs> and you gave me a real diamond chip. It's just a window to the expectations of what sister might be willing to tolerate to get to what she feels like is the big time. I'm absolutely okay with you treating me like a possession, only wanting me for my beauty and my body, as long as I'm being well taken care of. Not only that, but sister wants the American dream that she feels like all the other white women have who are sought after for their beauty, their long silky hair, which is why she was sure to straighten hers, you know, that extra, extra lightened skin. Am I not close to what you desire the most? Why can't I be kept like every other woman that I see? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Spark, Miss Waters told me that she saw you and Sticks on the roof. Ain't nothing wrong with me sitting on the roof talking to Sticks. Yeah, I heard y'all was doing more than talking. I heard y'all was messing. Oh, don't be messing. <laughs> Ain't nothing wrong with messing. Just make sure you go down to the drugstore and take care of some business. Don't be coming around here with no big bellies talking about you didn't know what to do. And make sure he gets you that real diamond chip. <laughs> A whole diamond chip, child. I want everything. And if I have to use my desirability to get it, that's what I'm gonna do. Speaking of the big time, Levi feels like he needs to hit it quick, fast, and in a hurry. Not only will it afford me a certain lifestyle and some money, but hopefully then, sister will be mine and only mine. All I have to do is be Satin's henchman and work my way up the ladder. But in doing this, we cough up all types of destruction in the name of Satin Struthers. Ciao. <laughs> It's something about the satin struthersness that sticks with you. I never forgot this man's face. I don't care where I see him at. He's just going to forever be satin struthers. It's just something about the energy and the force that he used to portray this disgusting character. It, it, oh, it, it's just so sick. 
and the way that he just kind of pounces on sister not that she wasn't absolutely open to it completely blinded by the means that she felt like this gangster with money could provide for her and not really seeing the bigger picture of the type of dude that he was meanwhile we have worked our way up to you know being in this nightclub got those red dresses this is the moment that we have been waiting for for a minute the girls have grown so much especially when you get into sparkle she still hasn't really found herself at this point of the movie she has just kind of pushed aside her admiration for sister and kind of transferred that over into six dreams hopes and ambitions and she is just kind of following him meanwhile sister is a drop dead gorgeous vision a dreamy vision in red that satin struthers is about to pounce on and ruin and then when we touch our hearts move at a steady pace ooh, ooh, yeah. i'm trying hard not to show the blushing over my face Ooh, baby, you bring out the woman. Ha, ha. What can I say that you can't see? Hope loving you don't confuse you. Hey, when I tell you Lynette McKee was selling the shit out of this role and singing them got dog on songs, like, awesome. I, she she, she could have had a career low key. I would have bought Lynette's album. We threw the bait out and we got the wrong one hooked on our love. Chow and Satin snatches that damn coat from that woman that he brought with him who was also light skinned <laughs> and punches her in the gut. <sighs> Lord, it's the scratch, the scratch. Who is right there when this happens? Levi, the same man who claims that he loves her. Uh, we don't love her that much. We wanted to possess her body and her beauty just like everybody else. Only Satin, Satin came to seek and destroy everything that she values about herself. Not only because we're ignorant and it makes us feel like a man, Satan, but I also want to snatch away what I like about her so that nobody else wants her. I need to take away her voice, take away that family, take away that beauty, take away everything that would make her attractive to somebody else. A sick individual. Nobody does anything. <laughs> you got freaking Levi over there. I can't say or step in or do anything because I need to stay inside of his pockets to get, you know, what I want. My own freaking ambitions. Do I want sister or do I want some money? Do I want to give all this up for a chick who might be able to be replaceable once I get where I feel like I need to be? Sticks ass. I don't give a damn what happens, who does it and where. As long as sister shows her ass up to sing in this club. With all three girls maturing in their own individual ways, we all start to drift apart. Whereas we have sister who is all engulfed in the world of sad, of course, we see that he gets her on drugs, moves her out, just completely isolates her to do what an abuser does, make her feel like I am all she needs and all she has, so I can't control her along with that bugger sugar. Then you get into sparkle. It's all about sticks as well as trying to help sister the best way that she she knows how. Then you get to my homie Dolores. Like <laughs> Dolores is so slept on in this movie when Dolores was low key, the smartest out of all the sisters. You can see that Dolores only really participates in the group, not only to be with her sister, but if it affords me an opportunity to do something other than domestic work, I am here for it. And though it's not expressed in the movie outright, you can pretty much tell that all three girls probably had different dads. And that kind of left Dolores being the one of the darker tone as the outcast, not as you know, desired as sister or even Sparkle. I love how in the movie that didn't define her and she always knew her worth and her beauty. Even when it comes to the group, I'm willing to partake in all of this to avoid scrubbing somebody's toilet, but not at the expense of my own sister. Cause child, by the time we get to so much joy for us, it seems so much hope for material things. 
is it only in my dreams? By the time we giving him something he can feel, sister is completely gone on the drugs as well as the abuse. You gonna let that nigga kill you? Like, I love Dolores. <laughs> I love Dolores. Even in the moments of their sisterhood, and it feels like two against one with Sparkle being so deep into sister's pockets of admiration to the point that we are willing to get and give her anything that she needs, even if it's a detriment to her own freaking life. Oh, Spark, sister can't fly with one wing. Yeah, that don't mean you fly your ass out there and go get the coke yourself. I like the way we carry on his love and wasting me on it on its mommy. Oh, get that damn man away. <laughs> get that man away. When Satin punches sister and tells her to crawl. What? <laughs> oh, just oh. <laughs> it never fails to make me mad. Like it just shows that a little bit goes a long way. We don't really even see anything with just the intensity and the force behind those punches that he is delivering to her in their bed. Just him insinuating, just the thought that he would ever want her to crawl just shows the type of individual that he is. But like most victims, nobody can tell her anything about her man, not even her own mama. But mama, he's as big time as it gets. Girl, you lost, <laughs> you lost like, Mary Alice in those stairs, like just such an underrated, just such a great actress. I love the way that Mary Alice like does a scene or just, just shoots a line of dialogue. It's so natural and so easy, but it's just so good. And she does this like in every little role that she's in, like drag you down to the gutter. Like, oh girl, it, it just, you just feel it in here. And that he does. I love that in the beginning of the movie, we focus so much on sister's beauty. So the moment that it is slowly taken away via this abuse, it affects you so much because you do know how beautiful she once was. Just like, girl, why? Why, girl, why? <laughs> the only person who does try to do something aside from Sparkle, who is just trying to comfort and appease the sister, even, you know, getting into her poor behavior of drugs, we have good old Dolores. Dolores Dolores, who the one person in the whole movie that is just trying to push up on her, one of Satin's henchmen, you know, hey girl, you know, get, get away from me. <laughs> I don't want you. If you are down with the likes of somebody like Satin, you could never do anything for me. But you know what? I might just tolerate you to save my sister. This is the only time that we see Dolores give her body for anything as far as just a man is concerned. It's for a selfless reason for her. But if I can get your pillow talking ass to help me drop a dime on satin, come on in here, nigga. <laughs> but I thought that said a whole lot about Dolores' character. Now, of course, this backfires because Mr. When You Gonna Give Me Something Else To Do, Levi, he is there in place of satin and he ends up being arrested instead yeah sticks you nigga i think you dropped a dime on me yeah i ain't dropping dime on your ass but i wish i had motherfucker like oh <laughs> i used to love that moment so much when sticks like finally kicks that ass i just wanted somebody to whoop his ass just please but it wasn't the same now that i'm older because it was just like we are commencing the ass kicking and we love the fact that of course like a lot of abusers Satan cannot hold his own when it was against a man, but you can beat up sister, the likes of a woman, all freaking day long. But it didn't do what I needed to do now because this was maybe the first time that I had the revelation of none of this, none of this, none of that was for sister. Brave, we have Dolores decide to step out on her own. No man, no group, no nothing pretty much, but I'm willing to risk it. I'm willing to try. There has to be more out there. Things are advancing as far as black people. And of course we know that a lot of this started with that deep rooted resentment that she has for the fact that my mother has to be a maid and she shouldn't have to be. Why do we always have to do domestic work? You, myself, we are so much better than that. Of course, Dolores is saying, I'm gonna take this and turn it into something else. But the way that the movie paints it, it's just like she's the the bad daughter, <laughs> pretty much. Of course, we have a sister out there being lost in the sad struthers and 
we have kind of Sparkle there as that golden child. We also see that there are few far in between moments where if there's no other sisters in the house, Sparkle is always there trying to assist, always trying to help. And then you have Dolores just kind of appear to be low key the bad seed who is kind of turning her back on her family and running away. When I actually saw her character as being a bit more progressive, this is, you know, 1958 transitioning on into the 60s. You know, this is a different time, child. We about to get the pics and pick out the afros and fight the power and whatnot. There is about to be a change and I felt like Dolores might be a part of that. I feel like they play with that a little bit when we get into the remake, but I like that they didn't write her off in the remake because after that scene in Dolores Leaves, we literally never hear from or see her again. Like you mean to tell me that Dolores would return home for her own sister's funeral? You know, Sparkle in the end becomes Loki a megastar. You mean to tell me she wouldn't come back? And they just kind of wrote my girl off, but I sent you Dolores. Fight the power girl. Meanwhile, Styx, who Effie loves by the way, lay off Effie, just take the money and run. The mama loved her some Styx. <laughs> Sticks completely breaks out when he figures out, you know what? Sister is actually too damaged, too beat up, and too drugged out to come to work. Uh, maybe I could replace her. Maybe I could figure some stuff out. Oh, I can't replace her. Oh, oh, this isn't, this actually isn't gonna work anymore. He just drops everything, gets upset, and leaves. You know, where's Dolores? How she just going? What about sister? Why would she do this? All I ever did was try to make her a star. Like, selfish. <laughs> all this selfishness. I work my ass off for all of this and none of you care. I'm going out ways yonder for a construction job. Sparkle, you can come with me or you can stay here. And now is like in real time why I understood fully why Sparkle decided to stay. Cause you know, Tyra like, girl, if you don't go with your man, sister is lost. <laughs> But it's like, no, literally in the movie, aside from Dolores and of course her mother, I am the only one who still cares about her. I can't leave my sister. Now, I wish that this could have progressed into her trying to really help sister and kind of like sister maybe falling off the wagon, but we just con continue to see Sparkle pretty much supply her with money for drugs. And then you can kind of take that for what it is also and pretty much sister being a product of this infamous fatal beauty. She admired her sister so much that she just really didn't even have the willpower to say no to her, even when it came to something like drugs. You get into sticks, if she's not showing up here to be beautiful and sing those songs, girl, I can't get out my face. You get into somebody like Levi, you see the whole process he went through. And then you have Satin Struthers literally beating her down to a pulp. Whereas I felt like the homie Dolores approach was, I cannot sit around here and just watch all of this happen, watch sister kill herself. Mama, I need to get out of here. I saw you Dolores. <laughs> but it was really easy for Styx to give Sparkle that brief ultimatum in the rain on a dark lit corner because he already had his plan in motion. That plan isn't working. I need to get out of here whether I'm with you or not. Give me love. It's so hard to do when you really, really love someone. Give it up! <laughs> oh my God. Just came to her. Oh my goodness. Sister looked so bad. Like her hair just kind of being wet and greasy looking and her, she just looks so disheveled and just so unlike the sister that we met in the beginning and you just want her to get some help so bad but clearly she is stuck in what she feels like is a healthy relationship yeah. Mary Alice, I need to know who you had over at the house. <laughs> I really need to know who you had over at the house. Sister, unfortunately, passes away at the hands of Satin Struthers. That precious Lord that we sung so happily in the beginning of the movie turns into sadness as we sing it over sister's dead body. Now notice, the wife of the family that Effie worked for as a maid was there sitting up in attendance at sister's funeral. This same family that my girl Dolores was vocal about the whole movie, mama 
them people don't give a damn about you. Thing is, this movie kind of tried to flip it to where we supposed to think they gave a damn. No, Dolores was right the whole time. <laughs> the pen in that, Sticks returns. Sticks returns and sister's body is barely cold in the ground the day of the funeral, trying to get Sparkle to come and sing. Now that he has better circumstances, you know, I'm working with a label, you know, there is a better opportunity for us to record an album. I just need a singer. We got the record. You know, sister died, but you don't have to bury yourself with her. The audacities. Mama, he left me, but he came back, didn't he? He only came back because he wants me to sing. Yeah, I know, baby, but you maybe should listen to Sticks. He just went away and he was doing what a man had to do. Hi, Keith. He's a good man, Savannah. Like, oh, Lord. <laughs> Sticks has always been about business, about success. A very young driven man. Really great traits to have in a man or a husband. But you think we could have had a little bit more compassion for sister passing away for the fact that Sparkle is not only upset, I do love the fact that once he returns, he returns to a different Sparkle. You know, I thought I was gonna die. I didn't think I would live another second. Like, oh girl, damn. Sticks had the boom doom, the set deal, okay. <laughs> But I made it through the seconds, I made it through the days, I made it through the week sticks, and I'm still here. High key, I don't really need you to survive. I don't need anybody. Maybe I just need Sparkle finally coming into her own. But it would have been nice for Sticks to have a little bit more compassion about the death, as well as the fact that I would be out here alone versus how we started. Levi's in jail, Dolores is in the wind, my sister is dead, and you're here begging me to get in front of a microphone? Relax. Now, of course, Sparkle comes to her senses and goes back to Sticks to record this record because he's a good man, Savannah. We don't just let good man go to waste in the 60s. <laughs> but in doing this, we need money to make this record. $10,000 to make this record. In comes the family that Effie has been cleaning for this entire time with the shakedown. Dolores didn't tell one lie this whole movie. Before we could even take some inventory of your woman and your glory, leave the bad things behind. We ain't even get to leave them behind yet. <laughs> we just recorded the record. Mr. Gerber, the man that Effie works for, who I believe was supposed to represent a Jewish man trying to muster his way into Stick's business by the time he realizes, oh, this just isn't some one and done situation. They are achieving a lot of success with this record with Sparkle. I want to be a part of this. And if you don't want to give it to me, Sticks, I'm just going to take it, maybe even threaten your life. Those moments are great. It kind of feels like we go somewhere else with the film, but I also love the fact that we get into Sticks really learning the music business. No, I don't want to just sign up with a label and take a deal. I want us to produce, create, and distribute our own records so all the proceeds go back to us. I'm not giving this to anybody, not even my so soup man who's threatening my life. But the fact that Mary Alice with her simple ass. <laughs> Oh, Effie, oh, Miss Waters, you know, she said that she was worried about you and that you should, you know, comply with whatever Max Gerber, whatever, whatever Mr. Gerber wants you to do. So I want to make sure you're okay. Like, ah, she was in on it too. <laughs> the wife, all of them were in on it. But however, whatever you want to do, I want to do it with you, baby. <laughs> of course, Dix makes it back to this moment in time that he has been waiting for forever. And you even see the likes of Sparkle coming out as not only an individual, but you also see afflictions of not only herself, but also sister in the way that she performs. But it's just truly all her own in her big, strong voice. The best rendition of Sparkle that she could ever be. Kind of a happy ending to a sad movie. I really wish that we wouldn't I want to know where Dolores at <laughs> I really want to know what happened with Dolores but be that as it may love this movie I always go back and watch it maybe every couple of years and it still holds it still is you know a sad time but a good time to watch overall it is inspirational in its own way and the song is gonna bop every single time if you have not watched Sparkle the OG in a minute do yourself a favor and go do that. 
Well, you guys, that was my review for Sparkle. I hope you enjoyed it. Please drop down and tell me what you think about this film before you go anywhere. Of course, leave a comment at the bottom and hit that like button. Go on over across the street, AKA scroll up. <laughs> go to the after party live that is going to premiere directly after this video and go support me over there along with my guests. I look forward to seeing you guys there so we can, you know, get a a little personal get a little laugh with the movie in real time i see you guys next time for my next review thank you so much for watching bye